Do you spend too much Good. time in this room? We all set? <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming this evening. Welcome to the first CROA candidate forum of the 2020 election of the Board of Directors. The second forum will be held on Monday, February the 17th from 6 to 8. Both forums are going to be live streamed and then available to view online at your convenience. These forums are conducted as a service to the residents. This is the perfect time to ask your questions that are important to you so you can hear directly from the candidates in an open forum. Thank you to the candidates for attending this evening so that we can actually hear your views. By now you should have received your paper ballots and online voting instructions. You'll be asked to vote for up to four candidates and you can vote yes or no for the proposed charter amendments. There will be a town hall this Thursday February the 6th at 6 o'clock here at the 851 building to discuss the proposed charter revisions. Please vote. Based on resident feedback from the forums of the past, the format this year will be a little bit different. The three board members, David Anderson, Marianne Berry, who is stuck on I-4 traffic but will be here very soon, and myself, together with three involved residents, Mike Jackson, Celia McFadden, and Jerry Barr, have gathered all of the questions submitted by the residents. Many were of similar topics, so they have been combined to catch the premise of the questions. Questions can still be submitted for the next forum, so please, if you have any questions that don't get answered tonight, submit them, um, submit them to me by, next, by the Friday before our forum, because again, our group is going to gather to edit the questions and make sure that they're all covered. Um, here's some of the protocols that are for, the e for this evening that are changed a little bit from the past. Right. Rule one. Turn off your phone, get in the stage. <laughs> That's my wife leaving. <laughs> All candidates will have a two-minute opening and a one-minute closing statement at each forum. These may be prepared in advance and include anything the candidate believes is important about themselves that they would like to share. Statements will be subject to a hard stop when the time expires for everything. Um, to permit as many questions as possible and to minimize diversions from the questions at hand, no references of individuals other than yourself may be made. Any candidates negatively calling out another candidate or individual will be immediately lose the opportunity to continue to respond to the question. As such, the previous ability to rebut the personal reference is unnecessary. This is to keep in time and interest of the content. All responses to the question of the forum should be positive and future focused. Each question will be identified with a time and content restraint. The response time instructions will vary from a single word to a maximum time. You cannot use your leftover time to answer something other than what was actually asked of you. You'll be, you'll be prompted where appropriate with a, fi uh, a 30 second remaining caution flag, which you can kind of see the yellow thing over there. And then you'll also have a 10 minute where or a 10 second where applicable. <clears throat> you will have a hard stop, even if you're mid-sentence. The moderator will read the questions and provide the parameters, followed by the first candidate that is to answer the question. Each candidate will have the opportunity to answer each question in the order specified by the moderator. The timekeeper will display the time flags for the candidates to see. The timekeeper will announce the hard stop where appropriate. Each candidate will have an opportunity to be the first person to respond to a question with a varying mixed order for candidate responses following the first response, and that, again, will be specified by the moderator. At this time, I would like to thank Mike Jackson, Celia McFadden, and Gary Barr for their attention and their um, assistance in doing this. Um, and thank you for Gary Hudspeth, who has agreed to be our moderator, but he also was our chairperson for the task force for the charter review. So thank you very much for your commitment. Please come on up. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm Gary Hutzbeth. First, I'd like to say we've already been embarrassed once, so silence your cell phones now. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, to the candidates, please be clear and concise. It will serve you well if you're elected. They can't hear you, Gary. Can't hear you. All right. The order in which I choose uh, the first response and subsequent responses have been 
designated for me by a random number generator, and I'm just going to read out the names as they occur. And remember, after each question, I'll give you the time length for that response, and they will be different for each question. So first is opening statements, and these are two minutes long. The timekeeper there is sitting in the front row, David in the orange. The first opening statement is from Vaughn. Uh, my name is Vaughn Roberts. Everybody hear me? Um, I've lived in celebration since 2014. Uh, my first involvement with uh, the town was with the Covenants Committee, and I served three years, about three years on the Covenants Committee. Then after that, I ran for the board, and I've been on the board now for the past two years, and uh, I'm running again. Uh, we have a lot of projects on the on our table right now. Uh, a lot of things going on. We 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 had our community surveys. Uh, we were looking for ideas on what the people that were owners in town wanted to do uh, in the future. Uh, uh, we've looked at different uh, properties uh, for different uses, sports. Uh, we've we've had uh, interests in community centers. Uh, performing arts, so we're looking at all that, but we're also trying to bud, uh, balance those desires with the budget that we have. So um, that's about all I have. The next opening statement is from Diana. Good evening. Uh, my name is Diana Vasello, and I live at 1110 Croton Place in South Village, and I've lived in Celebration since 2009. I previously served on the Board of Directors for a two-year term, and I've also served on the Covenants Committee for about two years. Uh, as part of that committee, I was asked to head a task force uh, to revise the covenant violation process to make that, it was an effort to make the process more streamlined and more resident friendly. So that was during my time on the board as well. Um, my background is in operations management and sales management as well as property management. And I currently work for Coke Florida and manage all the sales and operations here in Kissimmee. So if you see Coke in this area, it usually comes from my team. And thank you very much, Vaughn. I appreciate, that. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Um, many people have asked me why I wanted to run again for the board since I was on the board previously. I really enjoyed working on the board. It's definitely a challenge working in a homeowners association the size that we have here. And I feel that volunteering my time is my way to give back to the community. With the addition of the new homes and the new subdivisions coming online with Celebration, uh, I feel that my background and experience on the board as well as my business experience will help with the expansion of the community. As our, com as our community continues to age, we need to be vigilant about maintaining our standards, uh, the planning for replacement and upgrades and keeping our community standards high is going to be very important as we move forward because that is going to continue to infect, affect our property values as we move into the next three years on this term of the board. So I look forward to your questions tonight and thank you so much for having a filled room. That's very, <coughs> very gratifying to see people come out for the election. Thank you. Our next opening statement is from Jackson. Good evening. My name is Jackson Mummy. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank the moderator and the volunteers uh, who uh, put this together and submitted the questions tonight. And I want to say that it's an honor to sit up here with these other three candidates uh, to be uh, selected and considered by all of you for CROA. When I ran for the CROA board two years ago, I told you that I had no agenda other than to do what was in the best interest of our community. You honored me with your votes then, and in turn, I've tried to keep my promise to work on behalf of our entire community every single day. I believe Celebration is a better place to live, work, and play than it was two years ago because of the efforts of so many people, many of whom are sitting here tonight. I'm particularly proud of the work that we've done together as a board in the last 24 months. You'll hear more about our accomplishments and goals for the future tonight, but as we begin this forum, I'd like to highlight several areas of special focus for me from my first term. I led the creation of a condo council that represents over 40% of our members who live in condominiums and service areas. I took a leadership role in a wide range of difficult and persistent legal matters, working to find fair solutions at reasonable cost. 
I helped develop a first-in-the-nation part uh, partnership with UCF to set key performance metrics for management of sustainability. It's a key to a 2021 management RFP. And I was one of three board liaisons for our once-in-a-decade charter revision that Gary chaired, developed after more than 100 hours of public meetings, um, and which I hope you'll vote to ratify in this election. I also insisted on a fair pay-for-play model for our amenities to offset the cost and fairly allocate expenses to users so we can continue to balance our budget and plan for future growth. And I served as a liaison for the board to Artisan Park, the Recreation Committee, and several service areas. I look forward to your questions tonight and to sharing my vision for celebration in the years ahead. And now from Brian. Perfect. I too would like to thank Gerald. Celia, Mike, and Gary for the work tonight, and everybody else. <coughs> I think uh, it, it's interesting that we get such a big group here. My wife and I uh, moved here in 2008, and I was working through 2016, but for the first eight years, we were both very active. My wife was very active with the Community Hope Center, and I helped there. She was actually the chair of that project. Um, we were involved with many things with the Salvation Army. Um, we worked with the Celebration Foundation. My wife was actually on the executive board there. So I learned a lot about time, that what was going on in the town. I retired in 2016 when our company got bought by the Chinese, and they told me to go find something to do for five years, which led me to um, consider running for CROA at that point in the game. Um, for, I worked for the Zurich Group for about 20 years and for White Mountains about 12 years. I, in the reinsurance operations for both, I was either the United States or global chief financial officer, and I was also a chief operational officer. My expertise in, obviously, was in finance, but I also led many global projects and did a lot of communication stuff. So things that I really felt that I could bring to the board two years ago, and I think I really did bring to the board, was a lot of financial simplification. Um, we had financial stuff, but I think just presented it in a way that picture, people could get a much better picture of the actual financials and the budget process, running projects and stuff like that. So I, I've enjoyed working with everybody. I think the value here is of a diverse board, which we have had. I think we've got a lot of projects going right now, and I think the financial skills, the administrative skills that I bring can help in that area, and I hope you would consider voting for me again. Thank you. Now we have a total of six candidates running for the board. <coughs> I have opening statements from the other two candidates who could not be here tonight, so I'd like to read them on their behalf. The first is from Debbie McDonald. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't be there for the debate, so I'll leave it to Gary to tell you a bit about me. My family and I were among the first group of founding residents back in 1996. In fact, our three older children attended school right here in this 851 building. I've seen this community literally grow from the ground up and have volunteered with many county and community organizations and committees to make this a great place to live and raise a family. From the very beginning, I have been actively involved in many aspects of our community. I served on the PTA board and helped set a record for 500 new members one year. It helped that the principal agreed to have his head shaved at our K-8 assembly if we reached our goal. From big brick pathway fundraisers to women's club Christmas gifts for the children at the shelter, we live in one of the most unique and giving communities in the world. For many years, I've also served on the Celebration Foundation Board. Recently, I've also served four years on the Coral Board. In that time, I helped spearhead the dog park and spent hours poring over the financial records in the process of saving the community hundreds of thousands of dollars. My involvement has not been limited to celebration proper. I have helped work with the Help Now Shelter, the Hope Center, and am on the advisor board of the Salvation Army. I care deeply about you and our community. Should I be reelected, I will continue to fight for fiscal responsibility, total transparency, and for you. If you have any questions or concerns, please email or call. All contact information is available at our community website. I'm asking for your vote and partnership for a brighter celebration future. Thank you for being great friends and neighbors. Debbie McDonald. I now have an opening statement from Kevin. Kirby. 
Yes. <laughs> Kevin Kirby, thank you. Neighbors, friends, and family, thank you for taking the time out of your day to continue your involvement in Celebration's future. Unfortunately, I have travel commitments preventing me from attending the forum this evening. However, I would like to take just a moment to share a brief message. Prior to doing so, I'd like to send special thanks to both the on-site team and town hall for staying late this evening and to Gary for moderating the forum tonight. When I ran for the core board in early 2018 for the present term, I did so promising to provide a voice for our residents. Since serving as the Secretary of Coral for the past two years, I have pushed for transparency, communication, and a moving forward approach. I'm proud to say that management and myself have seen differently on many different topics in and around celebration. And as a result, I remain proud that I've been the catalyst for discussion and focused on the why behind the things this core board and management do. A resident in the community recently shared a great piece of advice it takes friction to make motion. In the end, we've agreed on the results more confidently than at the start of nearly every topic. Prior to being a part of the core board, I sat in a majority of the meetings for years before. I did this to not only remain educated in our collective community and common financial investment, but also to understand what challenges our community is facing, both large and small, or, and most importantly, why. As a result, that sat in the audience or reviewed the recording online, I often found it difficult when the full story wasn't relayed or questions from all angles weren't asked and answered to show how we got there. With your vote and continued support, I will continue to respond to preserve our community, protect our assets, push for accountability from all vendors. We're going to move on now to the questions presented to the forum tonight. I'll read the first one and give you the time link for responses and also provide the sequence of the responses. The first question is, what makes you uniquely qualified to assume the role of a core board member? Responses are one minute. And the first is for Jackson. Well, it's obviously my humility. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think that what makes someone a good CROA board member is a willingness to reach across uh, traditional divisions, traditional uh, areas of uh, its strength and encampment, and find ways to get the number of votes to make things happen. I'm proud that we have reached a unanimous decision on rejecting county money that would have taken away our, our lands at the ballparks. Um, I'm proud that we found a way to uh, bring fireworks back into our community on the 4th of July. I'm proud that we went from a newspaper to a magazine uh, because it was a financially wise decision. Those were things that were potentially divisive, but we found ways to reach uh, agreement. And agreement comes when you have board members that are willing to work across traditional lines. And that's what I think I can do. Brian. OK. I talked about my financial background earlier, so I won't repeat that. But, uh, to, to the first year I was on the board, I was the treasurer. The second year that I have been on the board, I have been the president. I think a lot of you have been able to watch me. I'm, I think I'm good at pushing things along. I think I'm pretty good at allowing people to participate, but then shutting it down at a point in time so it just doesn't drift forever. Um, I think I'm, I can manage things and bring them along well. And usually, whether I was the president or the treasurer or something else, I would be quick to make sure that we're actually being very objective in where we're heading, goal-oriented, and decisive. I, I just, you know, there's no reason for meetings to last six hours. We should be able to be quick. We should be able to be efficient. We should share a lot of information. I enjoy diversity and opinion. We push hard for that. And then we need to make decisions. Diana. I feel I'm uniquely qualified because I have been on the board of directors before, so that gives me some good experience and background. I also feel that my close to 30 years of business experience gives me the financial background and also the operational background that it takes to run a community such as Celebration. One of the things I'm known for in my current employer and previous employees, if you need a common sense response, talk to Diana. 
because sometimes things don't always go to make common sense. And I think that's what makes me uniquely qualified, as well as I have the ability to listen to the residents. And I'm willing to listen to the residents and the experts and gain expert opinion to help us make the correct decisions as a board going forward. Uh, I spent uh, 30 years down in Miami with the Miami-Dade Police Department, you know, retired there. I was a lawyer, been a lawyer since 1988, um, 89, I'm sorry. Um, I have no personal agendas uh, serving on the board. I am not indebted to any politicians. Um, I want to do what's best for celebration. Um, as Jackson said, we, we voted 7-0 not to take the money, and, uh, and w this town, we agreed, is not for sale. And this is our town, and we'll do what we think is best. Uh, I've attended committee meetings. The, the workshops and the board meetings are, are fine, but you've got committee meetings that we've uh, been attending, town hall. I've got experience uh, dealing with town hall. My time's up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jeff. More to come. Question number two. Some residents say celebration needs to attract more technology savvy businesses and young professionals. In what ways is this Corolla's responsibility and why or why not? If so, what specific strategies would you propose? You have one minute and 30 seconds. Vaughn, you're up. Can you repeat that? That's a yes, I will. I'm serious. Sure, it's a long, it's a long question. Mm -hmm. Some residents say celebration needs to attract more technology savvy businesses and young professionals. In what ways is this Corolla's responsibility and why or why not? If so, what specific strategies would you propose? Well, if, I, if I'm understanding the question, if it's dealing with uh, technical uh, technology, um, I had proposed, I think it was a year ago, or a year and a half ago, that we s establish a technology committee. And what we wanted to do was uh, bring in experts in the different fields, solar, uh, s other types of sustainability, um, charging stations for vehicles, uh, things like that. So we were <coughs> brought in experts. Uh, onto that committee in order to deal with that. I don't have the personal expertise in it, but we wanted to to establish a committee to make those decisions. And it, they've been uh, working on that now. And uh, uh, we look forward to, you know, seeing the, uh, the advances that they suggest to the board to see if they're uh, something that we can apply. Over to Jackson. For the last uh, 20 years, my wife Sarah and I have run an internet-based business, um, and so we are dependent on technology, and we are relatively technology savvy, I think. But it is clear that celebration has never lived up to the promise of what technology would be as a cornerstone. And so as we look to the future, I think that there are a couple things that we should be focused on. One is the idea of a mesh Wi-Fi network uh, that would allow us to have better wireless receptivity throughout the town and fewer towers. Uh, I recently met with the president of a company that does that work who is presenting to the technology committee and I'm excited for what that committee will do uh, with that information. We've also been looking at charging stations for not just NEVs, but wireless vehicles of all kinds. <clears throat> and I'm excited about the possibilities of adding some wireless stations throughout uh, Celebration so that we can uh, build that particular model. And then finally, I would say there's just the, the regular routine things like working with Comcast, which clearly did not treat our condominiums and service areas as fairly as they should have. and so. I was at the forefront of trying to force Comcast back to the table so that we would have the ability for every resident to have at least the ability to watch Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. The reason
reason it's called the Celebration Residential Owners Association is we look out for the owners. It is not our responsibility to worry about technology. I think it is our responsibility to make sure that we make it so other entities can come into town and help with technology, but that's not what we drive. We have $7 million a year in revenues. Island Village comes online. We'll be in the neighborhood of eight. What we really focus on is we focus on playgrounds. We focus on the civic corridor. Pe we have done the survey where people care about a community center. They care about performing arts. Things that make quality of life better for everybody. And I realize better Comcast makes quality of life better. But the technology is moving much faster than Crow could ever pretend to impact. I think what we need to do is use the money that we get from you as residents very wisely and worry about things like that I just mentioned, plus recycling, garbage <laughs> removal, all those types of things where we have the ability and the power to make a difference because at the end of the day, it's a lot of areas which would sound nice, but if we have zero power and we're in a world here where we have the Celebration Joint Committee, we have the Celebration Non-Owners Committee, we have CROA, we have CCS, we have all this alphabet soup, and on top of that, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is Disney, uh, or TCC, a.k.a. Disney. So we have limited power. We do the best what we have, and we really focus hard on those areas where we can impact your lives positively. Diana. I guess that's me. Um, I think it is important to attract new professionals and businesses to celebration. And what most of the, those businesses are looking for are quality home values that they can protect their investment when they move into the community. They're also looking at high quality amenities, being whether it's the wireless, whether it's the charging stations that the board is currently working on. And they're also looking for an efficient government or efficient homeowners association that takes the money that they invest in the community and use it wisely to upgrade the community and upgrade the amenities. Um, I think Celebration makes a great hometown for professionals because we offer not only the great events, but a great environment for them to make their home and raise their families. And that's the responsibility of the board to maintain this, to maintain that level of service to the residents. All right. The next question, what does fiduciary responsibility mean to you, and what is your experience with this responsibility? You have a minute and 30 seconds to respond, and first is Diana. <laughs> okay. Fiduciary responsibility um, means the making the most of the dollars that we have to spend, uh, taking our homeowner's dues and creating the most that we can by using them wisely in the community. I think we have to look at everything from the management that we offer to the events that we offer to our ability to create a financial budget that provides for replacement value as well as for the unexpected emergencies so we don't have assessments and we don't have um, additional dues that are owed to the residents that they may not necessarily be planning for in their budget. So as, our, as I interpret my fiduciary responsibility as part of the board is to make the budget work and protect every dollar that we spend. Bob? Uh, I, I agree with uh, Diana on, on that and I just would like to add um, in addition to making sure that we spend the money um, wisely. Um, we also have the duty that when we spend that money that it is going to be for things that we uh, have in celebration as far as buildings or parks. Um, it could be events that go on, but it, the fiduciary part to me means that you're doing something that ensures that we keep the town a very pleasant place to live and to make it a place where you can be assured that your property values uh, don't go down. At, at the minimum, don't go down, but we'd like to see all our property values go up. Um, so that's what I would like to add just to what you said, Diane. Thank you. Jackson? I'm reminded of the very old-fashioned word called stewardship. And stewardship really means entrusted with someone else's uh, important uh, items. We're entrusted as board members with the task of protecting, preserving, and improving values of our homes and our property in this community. That doesn't always mean don't spend money. 
Sometimes it means spend money where it will make a difference, where it will improve the quality of life, where it will improve the kind of community that we have. It means making decisions about whether or not a playground is important, or pickleball courts are important, or a community center is important. Those are not easy questions to decide. It takes time, it takes study, it takes work to learn how to deal with those things. We're very fortunate to have uh, someone like Brian, who is such a good financial person, and to have a management company that works with us on these items. But overall, I think it's the responsibility of every CROA board member to ultimately make a decision for themselves about what moves the community forward and how we spend our dollars in a way that will benefit the most people in this community rather than any specific one group. Right. Okay, so I don't disagree with anything the other three said, so I'll take a little bit different direction so you can hear something new. Um, when I think about fiduciary responsibility, I think about assets. So, you know, it's spending money wisely, but we've got the fields and everything which matter. And I think we have a responsibility as a board not to think about today, but to think about tomorrow. Um, we had a lovely workshop the other day where we just brainstormed about what are more the most efficient ways to deliver things. Because sometimes it's not always the right answer to spend $10 million, create millions of dollars of debts, and put people at hop for a decade. You can have outside-the-box linking, which we had some great outside-the-box linking the other day. And really, I, hear, I always hear people say as a fiduciary, are you responsible for t protecting the assets, the value of your home? So the answer is, that's almost impossible. If you go into a recession and, and you have to sell your home, you could sell your home for less. What we want to do is preserve the quality of life in this community so that other people want to move here. And we don't control everything like a school and stuff like that. But if you have nice parks, if you have good facilities, if you have a good budget, if you have good reserves, if you have a quality plan into the future, people will say, this is a good place to live over the long time, that fulfills the fiduciary responsibility for those assets and will make people want to move here because we're competing with wonderful communities around here and that is how we got to think about it, I believe. The next question, what specifically would you like to champion as a project, initiative, or undertaking during your term? This is one minute and 30 seconds and Brian, you're up again. Well, first off, I want to encourage every one of you to read the charter changes and vote yes for them. In the charter changes is a responsibility to have a request for proposal for the management company by the end of 2021. We haven't had one in a very long time. The charter change makes it clear that we've got to do one and have one at least every nine years. Um, I, have, I want to be a strong, heavy piece of that project because it needs to be done properly. There are people in this town who will swear on a Bible that they love CCMC and they should be here forever, and there are people in this town who will tell you CCMC should be on the bus out of town tomorrow. The right answer is neither one of those. The right answer is CCMC has a tremendous amount of dedicated employees who care a lot about this town. They have 29 to 30 people who make up home office. So when you talk about replacing CCMC, if that were to ever occur, you have to have a major company that could even do that. So I see one of the biggest political dominoes in this town for the next two years, one of the biggest management challenges, and one of the biggest financial challenges is doing that RFP right. And if I get reelected to the board, I'm going to try to be all over that. If it's the last thing I do on this board, great, but at least do it honestly, forthright, and for the best fiduciary responsibility of everybody. <laughs> Diana. Not to pile on what he just said, but that was what I, already, what I had written. I think f facing the RFP going into the um, 2021 year, I want to, when I, if I'm on the board and I'm elected, I want to have a very strong commit to, commitment to whatever <clears throat> that vote is going to be. So there's going to have to be a lot of diligence put into what the contract looks like, what, C what we would give up if CCMC was not the chosen for the contract, what we would gain with the new person, and if someone can handle a town the size of Celebration and a homeowners association as diverse as we are. So that would be, I would like to challenge that, so we may have to 
scoop that out if, that, if I end up getting elected, that um, that was where I would like to spend my time and champion that and be part of that to make sure that we get as many bids as possible so we really have some good hard knowledge to look at and make sure that we're making the proper decision because it is up to a nine-year commitment and that is going to move well into the future and that's why it's very one of the most important things that this board will take in the next year. Jackson. This is the one where I wish I could have gone first. <laughs> I would agree with everything that Brian and Diana said about the RFP. I think it is important. But let me go to a couple of other things that I'm also very much interested in. I think that the tsunami that's about to hit celebration over the next two or three years will come from service areas and construction. We are facing enormous challenges in our condominiums and in our service areas with the quality of work that was done many, many years ago. We have spent the better part of the last two years working through enormously complicated litigation to try and move forward to resolve some of those problems. It takes a certain kind of discipline and understanding, not just of the law, but also of the process and where we're trying to go to move that forward. And I think as a board, we've done a really good job of saying this is your project, this is your lane, this is your, your uh, uh, item to lead on. And I've been proud to work with Vaughn uh, in leading on a lot of those uh, issues as they relate to service areas and to litigation. And then the final area that's important to me is visioning and revisioning what celebration will look like over the next decade. I think it's important that we move back to the original vision of this community and figuring out what it is that makes this the most special place in the world to live and then continuing to work towards that. Vaughn. I'm glad I went last because I can see I agree. Everybody <laughs> made great points. Uh, the only thing I would like to, to see happen and champion would be to see that we, we went and had all those surveys done that you probably most of you all participated in. We had the dots, the red dots on the, the posters back here. Uh, we did them in, by email. We did them by mail. But we got an idea of what the community wants to happen. Um, to see happen. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to see as many of those happen as possible and I'd like to see our budget work, uh, put in place that we can accomplish all those. We, we're talking community centers, uh, we're talking playgrounds, we're talking pickleball, we're talking uh, lawn sports, all these things. I'd like to be able to get our budget in place that we can finance the short-term projects as well as the long-term projects to see those happen. Our next question, the proposed charter amendments include a mandatory competitive request for proposal for the management of CROA. What is your personal opinion on the frequency of an RFP? This is a quick fire. You have 15 seconds. <laughs> and the first is valid. Uh, I think it's a good idea. I think state law says five years. Uh, we're doing it every three years. I think it's a great idea. Um, it keeps uh, everyone on their toes. And uh, 15 seconds. Diana? I agree. I think we have to have the opportunity to have rebids on contracts so we know if we are spending our, dial our dollars wisely. Jackson. I agree. We'll do an RFP in 2021, then we'll review every three years. Mandatory RFP, if it doesn't happen in nine years, I think the task force did the right thing in, in putting that in the charter. Brian. I disagree. Do it right. Do it once. It's too darn much work to pretend like you want to do it every three years. I would say every six years or every nine years, it was thought about very carefully, vetted very carefully by the Charter Review Committee, which did a darn good job. I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. What specific actions do you want to implement to strengthen the relationship between CCDD and CROA? And what items do you see CCDD being involved in with your priorities for CROA? This is a minute and 30 seconds. And first up is Jackson. Really? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can have five minutes. <laughs> I love CDD. Um, I think that they perform 
a valuable service here, but we have truthfully not done very much in working together with them. And so as we go forward, I think that relationship needs to be improved. I look forward to the elections in November. There will be three CDD seats up, and I, I'm looking forward to the candidates that choose to run for those seats. I do think part of the relationship starts with better communication. We're currently fighting a problem with respect to taxation by the CDD of our ball fields property. Doesn't make a lot of sense, doesn't get us very far. Seems odd that only CDD wants to tax CROA for those ball fields. And yet we find ourselves going back and forth just trying to get the communications in place to take that tax assessment off. That's the kind of thing that should be able to be resolved much more easily and much more productively than we're, we're doing currently. And I think that comes from uh, spending time uh, with the CDD members uh, in order to find what we have in common, what works for all of us, and what's best for the community. Diana. I think we're both the CDD and CROA are both working for the same goals. I don't think that we, as when I was on the board previously, I can read it that we did not have a good communication with CDD at that point. Uh, I think going forward that we need to build that communication and be part of their team as well as them be part of our team. Um, working with the ball field taxation and working with how we build our amenities in the future, we need to get out in front of that with working with them personally. Um, and I know that's something that this board has committed to changing. Jackson. I already you answered already you. Yeah, Brian, <laughs> to get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's up to Brian. Brian. Sorry, what? Well, no, Vaughn. Apologize <laughs> so sincerely. Vaughn. Uh, I was the uh, CDD uh, liaison mm -hmm. as a board member here for, for some time, and I would go to their meetings and report on what CROA was doing and asking for maybe some type of, uh, of assistance on certain other things. Um, we looked at, in conjunction with CDD, we looked at a, uh, went to a demonstration where they had these sidewalk cleaners. You may have seen them around. And we were talking about going in with them on that. Um, the next thing we know, we didn't hear anything and they bought one. We were going to share the cost of it so we could use it on the resident sidewalks as well. But now the only thing that's getting done are the CDD sidewalks. So uh, I'd like to see, uh, more uh, sidewalks cleaned. I'd like to see the, the trees trimmed better. I'd like to see the streets clean, the curbs clean, uh, things fixed, uh, I, pressure washed and cleaned out there because I think that's a big part of the um, um, that's a big part of celebration is when you drive down the street. The most things you see are the front of the homes and the streets and the sidewalks and the trees. So. I think we need to somehow get them to come to our meetings and report to us when we have a board meeting, but we haven't been able to do that. So. Right. Um, I know the people on the CDD board. They're nice people. They're friends of mine. Mm -hmm. I've drank wine with many of them. The reality of the matter is they can't get two people together and talk to anybody because of CDD rules. We have worked with them. We have done things. but. The, the vision I see for CROA is that we are responsible to, for communications to the homeowners. I know we made some people on CDD very mad when we started the communications around the bike lanes and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I personally believe our responsibility at CROA is the 4,321 homes and making sure that we're communicating what we've learned is happening. The most effective way beyond a shadow of a doubt to deal with either CROA or CCD is show up at a meeting. There have been, like with Sheriff Jerry, when a bunch of people showed up at a CCD meeting, oh my gosh, we reacted. Uh, CROA, we're not stupid either. A bunch of people show up, we listen, like when it was Lakeside Security and stuff like that. If you want CCD and CROA to work better, the people with the power are you. What specific actions do you want to implement to strengthen the relationship between Osceola County and CROA? And what do you see the county being involved based on your priorities for CROA? Over to Jackson. <laughs> You notice a trend here? Oh, this <laughs> is uh, one minute and thirty seconds. One minute and thirty seconds. Okay. Uh, Twenty years ago, I ran for the Osceola County School Board, 
And that was an education. I got to go to places like Yeehaw Junction and St. Cloud and Kissimmee, obviously, and BVL and the nudist colony. We've got one in Osceola County. I have no idea what that does with CROA. But the problem that I see in dealing with Osceola County is that we have not done a particularly good job of lobbying for our desires and our wishes and our needs in the county at large. We are certainly the tax base, the biggest tax base in Osceola County, but we have not been particularly well represented uh, at the county level. And I think that this comes from what Brian was just talking about, participation, being involved, uh, not just in charitable and good works, of which we do many in this community for Osceola County, but also making our voices heard by being part of the election process for sheriff, for county commissioner, uh, for the other offices of the county. And I think that as CROA moves forward, we need to remember that we don't really have much hard power when it comes to the county. We have soft power. We have the ability to bring things to their attention, like the discussion about bike lanes on Celebration Avenue. But it's not really our call. It's theirs. And so the real power will come when you all come to those meetings and make your voices heard. Diana? I think Jackson brings up a good point that we don't have a lot of power over what the county does. But our power is in the communication with our residents and making sure that the residents are aware of how what the county is planning to do impacts them. So that would be my priority in making sure that the residents are aware what the county has planned or is working on by communicating and attending their meetings as well as the process of being a part of their election. Um, I think we get good sheriff support because we have Jerry that comes from the county and I think we have um, our citizen patrol which also comes from the county, which is newly expanded. Uh, and those things need to be communicated to the residents, so they are committed to that. And we need to be communicating to our residents what the county is planning that we have such a, that we have, that is gonna impact our community. Vaughn. Uh, Crow has worked really well since, um, as far as I can remember, um, especially with the fire department and the sheriff's department. We've met I don't, umpteen million times with both of those departments here in town hall on issues dealing with our traffic issues when we have, you know, certain events in town, you know, Fourth of July and Halloween. We just had a, another meeting with, uh, with the sheriff's office on that um, because of the problems we had with traffic. Um, as far as dealing with the county government, we, I, I can't remember how many times I've been down there. As a, as a crow rep along with other board members here dealing with the county, primarily the county manager's office, and then also uh, a little bit with the county commission. The problem we ran into was the county, we worked things out with the county manager's office and the assistant county manager and the county manager, and then the next thing you know, the county commission gets involved, and then there's a vote, and then everything got screwed up. You remember with the athletic complex, with uh, the agreement we initially had there. So we still got to stay in touch with them. We got to stay and meet with them and be cordial with them. And we just have to, and also keep the, the community involved in it as well. Right. I wouldn't have had a clue how to answer that quest this question two years ago. In the last two years, I've become a whole lot more wise. I've had a lot of meetings with county officials. When you talk about that, the level below, the commissioners, the Beth Knights, the um, Dave Tomax, and some of that, very nice people, very competent people, they care. They work, they've worked with us a lot. We've had meetings on Island Village, on the athletic fields, and lots of other things. When you, the reality of the matter is when you deal with county, there's five commissioners, and Peggy Chowdhury, who's our commissioner, is one vote out of five. And what you really quickly learn out is that politics matter and that politics can be played at a much different level for reasons that have nothing to do with, with what's right or wrong in celebration. It just has to do with who's up for re-election and who promised who this and who promised who that. Steve Waring does a very good job of working with Don and everything who's the county manager and stuff like that. So we've got the contacts, we have the communications going, but I struggle big time to hope that we'll get more progress. And we've seen the same thing with the school board and stuff like that. We have meetings. I mean, Mike and I and Vaughn had a meeting with the school board, um, or not the school board, but at the school system just a couple weeks ago on an issue and stuff like that. So we have the things. We're striving, but we've only got so much 
we have no teeth. We have hopes. Our next question, what is the biggest challenge to the coral board as Island Village comes on board? This is a one-minute response, and we'll start with Brian. We spent a lot of time talking with Island Village, anatomy, streetlights, and this is going to shock you, but sometimes real estate salespeople can sell visions of wonderful plum trees and then reality sets in. Reality in the next six to seven years, and that's how long it will take, they've already paid the money for versions or sections one, two, and three of it. Does a recession happen? If a recession happens, Island Village could really have some serious problems. Do they build up the code? We've already seen many situations with other areas where TCC cut deals because at the end of the day, Disney cares about Disney making money, not about celebration. Um, and, and I don't mean to really criticize. I'm just saying those are the realities that we have. They mean well, but there's a lot of things outside of our control that could really do it, and we have no control until that's turned over. So that someday we're going to inherit something, and we're going to say, okay, we got it. Jackson? I appreciate that the representatives of Island Village have continued to meet with CROA and to keep us informed, but I also think that we should be sleeping with our eyes open here. The nature of Island Village remaining and becoming a full-time residential neighborhood and not Margaritaville Junior is important to us. It's critical to us. In fact, we had a meeting with uh, Arias Bossinger Law Firm and the condos uh, yesterday to talk about the nature of short-term rentals. I think short-term rentals will be an ongoing challenge in Island Village because of its location, because of the uh, construction of a 400-room hotel at World Drive by the Celebration Company. <clears throat> and I think it's very clear that we're going to have to be diligent in keeping the light shined on Island Village as they develop that property and that they stay within the rules uh, that are set by the charter and the bylaws uh, for that area. Diana? Um, I was on the board when Spring Lake was in the process of being built. So I do have some experience dealing with this as uh, a new amenity and a new subdivision come online. Um, I like that the board has currently already built those relationships with Madame, has already started that process much earlier than we did with Spring Lake. And I think that is a very strong step forward to make sure that they're at least having a voice at the table. They're both very right. Madame doesn't have to listen to any of this. And, but the only thing we can do is build those relationships and encourage them to support this as another subdivision of celebration to abide by our, our covenants as well as our charter. Um, but at this point, it's all about relationship building and being vigilant as to what's happening over there. And it could be several years. And Bob? Uh, all good points from all the, the other members up here on, on the panel. Um, in addition to those, which I agree with, I think that we we're going to have a big challenge as a community that already exists to somehow welcome Island Village in as part of celebration. There, are, It's a long way off. I mean, if you, you can see that the road has already gone through. They don't have the trellis up yet, but the road's through, and they're working on getting it in there. And the first thing I think is going in is the school. But, um, it's going to be a challenge to somehow make them feel like they're part of celebration. And I think the board, whoever's here, when, when Island Village comes uh, online, I think it's going to be a challenge to make sure that they are included in our events or we hold events out in Island Village as well. So. The next question, what is the single largest issue in your mind that celebration has to confront over the next year. This is only a 30-second response, and we'll start with Diana. I think the, the single largest issue that we're going to have to confront is an aging community. Um, we have our population and our amenities are all continuing to age, and we need to make sure that our budget and our plan is strongly in place to make sure that we are maintaining our amenities and our quality of commitment to the community. So I think that's a huge issue as we move forward. And now, Vaughn. Uh, the budget. I think we have to get our budget uh, in line. We have to know where the money is going to be coming from. 
and where it's going to be going. And budget to me is uh, right now number one to, to make sure that the, uh, the things that we want to do are going to be able to be funded. Jackson? I don't think we get the luxury of having the single largest issue. We've got a whole lot of things on our plate. I agree with Diana about an aging community. I agree with Vaughn about a budget. As I said earlier, I think service areas and construction litigation is huge, but we've also got a massive RFP that's going to take an incredible amount of time and energy on the part of everyone here uh, to bring that to fruition. So I think we've got to be able to walk and chew gum and do a couple other things at the same time. And Brian? We're doing a lot today, and I think we're doing them pretty well. I think the major issue for 2020 into 2021 is the RFP planning. And just like we did the charter project and we got a lot of people from the community involved, the RFP, if it's not properly planned and executed, we have heard from other communities and lawyers that it takes 10 to 12 months to do it right. We be, if we're going to do it right in celebration, we need a lot of community involvement so people don't feel like the board cheated, you know, literally. And so I'm out of time. Right. Uh, this next question is a follow-up to the question you just answered. Based on your previous answer, describe how this issue is in the purview of CROA. If it is not under CROA purview, who is it under and how would you influence this issue? There's a minute and 30 seconds, and we'll go back with Diana. The single largest issue I said was aging, and it's definitely within our, our control, and it comes back to our budgeting and our planning and making sure that we have proper uh, engineering studies to make sure that our reserves are set to cover our aging population and our aging amenities and our, you know, as the homes and the service areas continue uh, to need additional maintenance to keep them to the level that they are. Dan Bond. Uh, I, I mentioned budget as being uh, a high priority. Um, I, we have, CRO has complete control over our budget for the most part. Um, we can decide you know, what we're going to spend money on, what we're going to put in our reserves, um, what's the best use for the money um, for what the town wants to do. Um, so I, we have complete control. We sit down, we look at the funds that we have, we look at the projects that the community wants uh, the most. Uh, we do that through the surveys, and um, we just have to manage the money. Jackson. I think it's pretty clear what's within our purview. Let me talk for a moment about what's not within our purview. It's not within our purview to remove Lexan as the developer in uh, town center, whether we'd like to or not. It's not within our purview to get involved in the litigation between condominiums and their builders. It's not in our purview to take on uh, any problem that comes from any place, any time. What is within our purview is the ability to continue to build the community, to spend our assets wisely, to work out uh, satisfactory uh, uh, settlements where they impact the properties like service areas that belong to the Residential Owners Association. And I think it's important, I'm glad this question came out, but I think it's important to say that there are some things we might like to do that we just simply cannot do. They are not available to us to do. And while I would love to be able to do something about Town Center, I don't think we can, and I think it's important to acknowledge that. Brian? Okay, and I spoke about the RFP when I ran out of time. Um, I, I'd like to go just a little bit further with the RFP. I think it's really important because we, like this year, we could had UCF complete performance metrics for everything that we've got CCMC doing. We did that with an eye towards the RFP. So we've really done a lot of work in the last year or two about what is it that CCMC does, what do we expect of a management company. There I would like, when I talked about getting the community involved, if we get the community involved, then it allows us to have the community give feedback. Do they really like the way this is being done here or would they like to see enhancements here? Because if we're going to go out and talk about how we might change CCMC's contract or somebody else's contract, are we getting the same service or a different service? So we've got one chance here in the next 18 months to say 
what is the service standard that we as a community want that's going to require input from the community, not the board, top down, will get pushed back on hugely hard. So we really need a bottom-up thing. It's a, it, that is totally within CROA's purview, but it requires you and it's going to require us almost to start kicking this off in April with an eye to finishing it no later than probably August to September of 2021, and that is what I'm trying to really get people up to speed on. This is why the moderator has a 30-second option that I'm taking now. This is not a break. And I invite the candidates to stretch their arms and stand up and adjust your socks. Back to break. I think someone's taking the opportunity. Wow. But take a deep breath. Well, I didn't expect him to leave the room, but now we're. Well, you know. You got to take a break sometimes. <laughs> okay. There you go. You did done. It. I'm done. You're done. Okay, move on. Thank you. It's our seventh in the stretch. There you go. You guys are really good. Yeah, it is. But they did a good job selecting questions. Yeah, this is also time. Two hours is a little jeopardy. Yeah. We will be done before Steve. <laughs> oh, yeah, really. Yeah. We're yeah. getting there. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Things I would have liked to have done. <laughs> <laughs> good play. <laughs> When do we get to ask you questions? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, we're going to get a lot of questions on Thursday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All I right. A lot of people Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to start <laughs> Can everybody talk louder so they can hear it back? Uh, yes. I'm trying. I, I do encourage the yeah, the seats to speak up louder <laughs> or some of the people in the back of the room to move forward, perhaps. Yeah, it's really hard to. All right, moving on to the next question. Yes. All right. There are people who would like to end the meeting at 7.30. Mm -hmm. Would you like to maybe finish our questions at 7.30 and then do a closing statement after that? That'll be fine. Okay. You know what we could do is Talk maybe is, is stick around after. And yeah. If you have personal questions you want to ask, I'll stick around. I'm sure the others probably yes. would too. We can do that. Sure. And the ones that want to stay can. can so do a stop at 7.30. We'll, we will do uh, final statements at 7.30, which will take about 15 minutes beyond that. So we should adjourn by 7.45. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Now the next question. Name one thing you would do as a core board member to increase the percentage of residents voting in the elections. This is a one-minute response and starts with Brian. I would love to see everybody vote. We, ha we have tried so very hard to do the Friday Flash emails. We have so tried so very hard to encourage everybody. With the charter here, it is critical that we get people to vote. Um, and, and you can vote yes or no for the charter. You can vote yes or no for Brian Kinsel. But I still think participation is one of the greatest things you can do. I mean, we're talking about voting here, but I still am surprised at how many people will say, what is CROA? So, you know, we have to, and it's a serious question, and I, you know, as we go to the new board, I'm almost of the opinion maybe we have to take the magazine and just continue to do continued re-education. There are people in this room who are very active in many things, and I appreciate you more than you can know. Please tell your neighbors, get involved. Thank you. Bob, your turn. I don't know if you're ever going to improve it. I mean, look at the national voting. Uh, percentages, you know, how many people really go to the polls. I don't know if that's ever, we're doing what we can. We post it uh, online. Um, when we have things like this, we, we, we have mailings. Um, I mean, look, this looks just like a board meeting, except we have people here. <laughs> we, we typically don't have people. And it'd be nice if we could get people involved and come to the meetings, the workshops, and, and, and that type of thing. But I just don't. 
I think we're the town hall and the board's just we're doing everything we can to get people involved and in I just think we're instead of beating a dead horse you call, you know you're flogging a defunct equus I think is basically <laughs> what we're doing here. <laughs> Jackson well, I'm pretty sure we don't want to use the Iowa caucus app. <laughs> but beyond that, I think participation in voting comes from one-on-one -on -one contact. I've been out knocking on doors, talking to residents, uh, doing that ugly thing called campaigning. There is nothing that beats just meeting people and talking to them and expressing their opinions and hearing from them. And I think that all of us as uh, candidates need to be out there doing that, talking to people, doing more than just uh, social media, but literally face-to-face -face in real life, uh, making that effort happen. I think we're doing as much as can be done by going to groups and meetings, but literally nothing beats just talking to your neighbors, and I think that's what we want to be doing. And Diane. I agree. It is very disappointing when you see the amount of turnout for the elections. Uh, we have such a great community, you think everyone would want to vote uh, to be a part of that. But I don't think a lot of them in, uh, realize the impact of their vote. Um, I agree that it's the one-on-one -on -one contact. It's the contact of being out in the community, being part of the organizations, especially getting with the teams and the kids and the school and the getting to the parents where they recognize how important Crow is. And I think that's how we'll get the vote out. Uh, and getting a lot more volunteers that are part of CROA on our committees that can help us get that out. There's only seven people on the board, and uh, but we need more people that are out there talking about how important participation is, including in voting in the election. That was that. <laughs> okay. Right. The next question. The newly constructed athletic fields are projected to operate at an annual deficit. How would you intend to promote, develop, and increase utilization to reduce the deficit? That's a minute and 30 seconds, and we'll start with Jackson. Uh, I'm glad to go first on this because I just learned this afternoon that Orlando City Soccer has agreed to rent uh, unused fields at the complex. Uh, yes. to the tune of somewhere around $90,000 a year. Um, that will not take away from our existing program with Celebration Youth Soccer. I'm excited about our partnership with them. Um, I know this will stun some of you, but Lee Moore and I are actually having coffee this week. And there is the opportunity to build relationships and to draw that unused facility time down. We're currently using 63% of our field time at the complex. Uh, we now have that metric thanks to the work that Nikki has done at, at Town Hall and working with the UCF study. I'm excited that with those kind of metrics we can now look at that and say, when are we not using the fields and what can we do? And yes, Alan, we'll try and get you the opportunity to walk through the fields in the morning. But the ultimate goal here is to make sure that we're using those fields to the maximum so that not just for revenue's sake, but because it's an amenity for all of our community, for our kids, for our families, for those who want to play not just soccer, but to play lacrosse or flag football or just kick around a ball. And I think that this is the approach that we've got to continue to take to be aggressive and look for new opportunities. And so I'm really excited about what's going on there. Brian, your turn. Uh, I'd like to say that, yeah, it, the expenses are about 350 throw in Jackson's number, we're probably up to revenues, 160,000, so we're losing a couple hundred thousand. That's going to be reality. So what I'm more interested in is when we talk about a performing arts center or if we talk about a community center or stuff like that, that we don't repeat lessons from the past and find out instead of losing 200,000 a year, we're now losing a million dollars a year. And I want to be careful here because past board members approve things and we learn from them and two, four or five years people are going to sit around and say, what the hell was Jackson and Brian thinking when they made this dumb decision? That was the, re <laughs> <laughs> the, the reality of the matter is, is you, you build a big project, you learn, you do something, you learn, and it gets back to our fiduciary responsibility conversation here earlier, which is what I really care about is that we grow and learn. We're not going to change what is. We're not going to make them break even. 
I'm not worried about that. They're getting better. They're being used a lot. They're for our kids. It's working well. Nikki and some of them are doing a great job of renting them out to people from ESPN and other places to enhance revenues. And I want to make sure that we learn the lessons and proceed wisely with the next decisions tomorrow. Vaughn, please. Uh, I was recently up there this week. I think I think it was this week. I can't even remember anymore. Uh, walking the fields up there. The lots that we have that are still vacant, lot B and D that are up there, we were looking for a place for to see if it was conducive for pickleball. And while doing that, I walked all the way down to the fields, and there were a lot of lacrosse uh, teams up there practicing. Uh, girls from uh, up north, states up north, and they had come down here because they, they were down here for some uh, lacrosse tournament at Disney, I think at ESPN, Disney somewhere. And uh, so it's getting used. I think it's going to get used more as the word gets out that these fields exist. This is our first year, and I, I think it's going to get better. Um, the fields will get used. Uh, maybe we won't break even. Maybe we'll have a def deficit, but I think it's going to get better. Diana? Uh, First of all, I love that there's a metric attached to it, which was that never existed before, that you could say it's being used this percentage of the time. You could drive by the fields over here and say, oh, yeah, they're using it most nights. But I love that there's a metric there that we can actually have a key performance item to look at. So the board has done a great job with that. Um, it's an amenity. It's not probably designed to be a money generator. But as the community grows, Naturally, we're going to have more input with more residents and more usage of the field. But I think we also might want to step out there. I know they're working with ESPN, but we also might want to step out to some of the other fields and see where they're getting, uh, where other homeowners associations are getting additional usage for the fields that they have. We're not the only community that has ball fields that they use to run out. So I think we might want to look out there, even outside, to see where we, what other revenue and what other avenues we can pursue to generate additional income off those fields. It's a great amenity and again, um, the Orlando City thing, that's a great win. So, great job. Mm -hmm. This question has a second part. What would you propose to improve general access to the Celebration Community Field Complex? A one minute response, we'll start with Jackson. Um, the first thing is we've got to have enough parking um, we have to find a way to get traffic in and out of that complex in a reasonable way. Um, we have not yet hit the rainy season and the, uh, the mud and the difficulty. We talked about this at our most recent workshop. So I think we've got to figure out what to do with what we're calling Lot D, which is the bigger space uh, there. So I think that's part of the access. The second part of this is that as we begin to figure out when the fields are being used and when they are being maintained and what we have to do to maintain them and move the nets and uh, trim the fields and so on, how do we do that uh, in a way that gets the equipment out of the way and keeps access open on the sidewalks and in the pavilions? And so part of this is literally as simple as just building and finding some storage space uh, at the field so that we can get that equipment out of the way and make it more accessible. Right. I am. Um, we've taken Lot B out there and we're going to turn it into pickleball. We're going to turn it into nice pickleball courts. We talked the other day about Lot D. We really want to figure out a relatively cheap way to turn it into parking because we're having a lot different ideas about how to proceed with a possible community center, how we might do like an outdoor theater for performing arts versus a building a new building and stuff like that. So we're trying to be innovative in our thoughts. Clearly, the Civic Corridor is not just for kids. It should be for adults. It should be people who want to run and stuff like that. We've, it's, it, but it started in September. So we're learning a lot of lessons. And, and we'll keep doing those reviews. We've got to make it better. And there are people who send us emails. And I would encourage you to keep sending the emails and pushing us hard. We need to get to where we're satisfying more and more people so that it's an asset for the community. Alarm, please. Could you just read that? Um, Question one more sure. What would you propose to improve general access to the Celebration Community Field Complex? Okay, I, I agree with what's been said so far. Um, my initial thought when those fields went in and uh, was that 
we will take one of the fields and make it for the residents, uh, one of the grass fields, and that the residents would be able to go up and use that field at, at no charge. And uh, that didn't work out too well. Um, my idea didn't work out too well, but that was my initial thought. Um, that's not being done, but I just thought that maybe if there was a way to, to accomplish that where the residents wouldn't have to pay and still schedule it, um, but now, the way we're working now, we're trying to use other areas within the town um, because all the fields are charged, uh, charged the fee, so, sorry. Diana? Um, I think this is one of the areas I was, you know, I was on the board when we actually took the parcel over from Disney, but didn't get to the point where we're actually building the fields. So I will be honest, this is one of the areas that I would like to delve into and learn more about what is, how the residents are uh, feeling about their access to the fields as well as the parking issue. Because I think when we initially did this as, a, as an older board, I thought we had that kind of laid out. And in reality, things change as it gets built and people start using the amenity. I think learning from what's going on out there, and I um, will need to get more up to speed on that. All right. What are your ideas regarding senior citizen amenities for the community? And this is a one minute response. <laughs> Diana, you're up first. Thank you. Um, I think we, ha we have a lot of senior citizen options in town. I mean, my mother was part of Thriving in Place. I think we have a good lifelong learning program. Um, but I think that there are room for, you know, if we want to have our, um, our um, committees look at ha offering more amenities to the seniors as to what they're asking for. Um, I would be open to listening to that of what additional amenities they're looking for as well as what we already have and the usage of what we're getting. Uh, Bob? Uh, I think when you say the word senior, it almost, <laughs> uh, almost uh, implicates a, an inability to do a whole lot as far as sports go. But I, we have people my age out there that want to get involved in some sports um, such as you got the lawn sports people that now I think we've located a place to put in the lawn sports um, croquet bocce ball those types of things are still active and we want to get those people in uh, places where they can play as well and then I think Diane also mentioned we have thriving somebody mentioned thriving mm -hmm. for people that aren't as mobile but we still have seniors that are quite mobile and we're looking for uh, uh, any type of sports that they may want to uh, participate in um, other than uh, the two that I just mentioned. Brian, please. I think we already had a plan. I mean, we did an extensive survey last year. As a result of that survey, we came back with priorities that included bocce ball, croquet. We're dealing with both of those right now. We're finalizing decisions between Artisan Park and East Village. Pickleball, which is played by a lot of seniors. We've made a decision there. Um, so we've done quite a bit. When you, um, we've spent a lot of money, so we're dealing with the shoestring budget, budget right now. But I mean, we had a section the other day where we brainstormed changes to the 851 building, maybe renting space at Stetson and going totally outside the box there, maybe changing Lakeside to make that a performing, outside performing type thing. So, you, you know, we're not sitting around saying, so we're actually taking the top 8, 10, 12 priorities that came out of this extensive study we did, and we're moving on them as a board right now. I think that takes care of seniors and everything that was raised. Of course, Jackson. I was going to say we just asked Vaughn, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know. I think I represent that. I think <laughs> I'd like to talk about something in terms of amenities that's a little different. Um, I think the facilities, parks, and recreation plan that we did talked about arts and performing arts and a place for the arts. And I don't think that that's unique or exclusive to seniors, but I think it's one of the areas that we are not able yet to uh, properly address. And so I would like to look at things like uh, taking over and renting the AMC movie theaters or finding a way to uh, take uh, part of the space at Stetson, as, as Brian talked about, or build on to the space here. I think that the arts are something that we should continue to uh, be concerned about and interested in. 
um, I think they make for a better community, not just for our senior citizens, but for everyone. I thought you were going to propose a casino. Oh, oh yeah. That too. I'm sorry. Oh, please. <laughs> uh, candidates, uh, this is a quick fire response. So I'll read the question, and you have 10 seconds to answer. Fast one. How much time can you devote to the coral board director position? Please answer with just a number of hours per week on average. <laughs> the first answer comes from Vaughn. Well, I'm retired, so I can devote as many hours as it takes. I mean, I've some days, some weeks you'll have five hours, some weeks you'll have 20. Tons of Next is Diana. I work full time, uh, but my day starts early, and I'm willing to, and I'm very electronic. So if I have to be online to take meetings, I will do that, and I'll do what's necessary. Good, Jackson. I spend 30 hours a week right now. And Brian. Ron and I both ran for re-election because our wives want us out of the house. <laughs> uh, it's probably I spend anywhere from 20 to 30 hours a week. All right. The next question. In one minute, tell us why you want to be a member of the Coral Board. Of course, it's one minute response, and the first goes to Jackson. For the power. <laughs> and the pay. And the pay. <laughs> and the deep respect. <laughs> I want to be a member of the Coral Board because we've started things that matter in this community. There is work still to be done. We have enormous opportunities ahead of us in the next decade to make this community truly special the way that it was when my family and I came here 25 years ago. That work requires dedication. It requires involvement. It requires a collaborative board, the kind of people that you see up here. And I think that we have the opportunity to really move the community forward, and I want to be part of that. I think it's a lasting legacy. Brian? In my life, I, I, I touched on it earlier, I've always been good at financial things, organizational things. I love politics. I've always been a big part of corporate politics and stuff like that. That's all stuff you do here. When I um, retired, um, I have... I have a five-year non-compete, so I have time on my hands, and I enjoy doing this. You meet an awful lot of people. You meet the occasional idiot, but if I was honest with you, 90, well, but if I'm honest, 99 out of 100 people are very nice, they're fun to work with, they're respectful, I enjoy the interactions, and I think I'm making a positive difference for celebration. Diana? I want to see where this community can go. I mean, we've had a great run. I mean, we're almost 25 years old. I want to see where this community can go, what we can uh, improve on, what we can set the standard for other communities for. And I want this the place where my daughter can bring her grandkids, you know, bring my grandkids to, uh, and still be the same hometown, supportive community that the, it currently is. And I want that to continue. So that's why I want to be on the board, because I think that's the direction that I want this to go. And Bob? Uh, I've enjoyed being on this board for the last two years. We've accomplished a lot. We've got a lot on our plate. Uh, my main uh, desire is to remain here until we get these projects that are partially started uh, or in the planning stages um, completed. Um, I want to see the athletic complex uh, uh, become uh, fully operational with those two vacant lots um, and I'd like to uh, uh, see the events uh, being uh, continued and even added to and uh, I think we can get that done in the next few years. This will be our last question for tonight and then we'll go into closing statements. In, your, in the most recent survey of residents two years ago, 92% are satisfied with life and celebration. What is your reaction to that information? You have one minute, and we'll start with Diana. I think that's a great score. I mean, 92%, but I don't know uh, if that totally represents our whole community um, with the base of the number of responses that we have. But I think that's a, that says we're headed in the right direction, but that doesn't mean that we should stop. There's new things that we have to embrace and things we need to continue to improve on. Uh, so I think overall we're headed in the right direction and we need to keep going that way. 
Bob? Uh, 92% is a nice number. Um, the way I've seen it operate in the past, I'm not saying this board or the past board, but in the past I've gone to a lot of board meetings. What you see are, are the vocal, a lot of times it's the vocal minority. And, and you can't base your decisions as a board on the vocal minority. That's why we did those surveys, so we can find out what the community wants. So we wanted to make our decisions based on the silent majority if we can. Jackson. We stand on the shoulders of the people who have put in the hours and the effort and the, the work over the past two decades to reach a 92% satisfaction level. But it's incumbent on us to continue to move those numbers up to make this an even better community. I agree with Vaughn and Diana. We can do better, we should do better, and we should not stop trying to do better so that this becomes the opportunity for every resident of Celebration to have the place that they envisioned and dreamed of when they moved here. And Brian. The strength of Celebration, in my opinion, is the volunteer community. We have a tremendous amount of people. I look around this room and I recognize a tremendous amount of people in this room who send me emails, who help with projects, who are involved with the foundation, who are involved with CROA, who are involved with the dog park and all kinds of things. And I can't say thank you enough. The reason a lot of people are happy in this town, I believe, is we have a lot of people who do very good things that make this a fun place to be. Yes, I understand the Lexan issues and I understand the parking issues and other junk like that, but it is a <coughs> nice place to live and I personally would like to thank you and a lot of people on TV because you're the real reason 92% is what it is. Well, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to proceed with closing statements now. They are one minute in length, and we'll start with Diana. I appreciate everyone coming out tonight and listening online. Uh, I think the board is a very strong group that is currently on the board. They're very educated, very high level of commitment to our town. I feel that I would be a great addition to the board. Uh, with my experience and with my commitment to the town and I really feel that this is going to be a great go moving forward we have a lot to accomplish and I really want to be a part of that so I would appreciate your vote I appreciate your time and listening to all of our questions and the, also the commitment of the other candidates that have come out to be a part of this forum so thank you Brian I've learned over the last two years that boards evolve you start off in March and you think one thing and as time passes you learn another. And it depends on who's in what authorship positions and stuff like that. The most important thing when you cast an election and you look at the people are, you got four people who came tonight. You can see us and how we react to stuff. That's important. The other two you haven't learned as much about. Um, board members, are they people who can work with other people? Don't elect somebody to the board who can't work with other people. That's just a disaster. You work with seven <clears throat> people, you have to have a lot of interaction. I feel, you know me or you know people who know me, I've worked my butt off. I think I'm a positive contrib contributor. I've enjoyed being the treasurer, I've enjoyed being the president, and I do appreciate your votes in the past and hope you'll vote for me again. Thank you. Bob? Uh, I want to thank all the people that come to our meetings, uh, come to our workshops. I know I see Seal showing up all the time, sometimes alone by yourself, nobody else. Eileen shows up a lot and Dory and Mike, but, but what I would ask is that where you're going to see the work getting done is the workshops. Board meetings, we come and pretty much all the work's been done. At the board meetings, we're sitting and we're voting on, uh, uh, on motion uh, agenda items. So. If you come to the workshops, that's where you're going to get your input uh, accepted um, because by the time the board's already having their regular meeting, it's going to be almost too late. So come to the workshops, give us your input. That's where, where we learn what you want. And uh, thanks for uh, coming. Jackson. Nearly 25 years ago, my family moved to Celebration in search of a better life for our children and a community where we could grow and enjoy life to its fullest. 
We imagined a place where neighbors knew one another, had access to a wide range of activities and amenities, a world-class health and education system, and a shared vision about what it meant to make the world just a little better. But imagination takes effort to become reality. It takes commitment, time, energy, devotion, and no small amount of frustration. I ran for CROA two years ago to help advance a vision for our town based on our shared history and my role as a founder and leader. As you've heard tonight, I'm proud of what we've accomplished these last two years, but there is much more to be done. Our dreams and visions are not yet reality, but we grow closer each day to what is possible. It's an honor to represent you in that journey and to share it with each of you, and I ask for your vote to continue that work and to lead us into the next 25 years. Thank you. Now we have two other, two other candidates that couldn't be here tonight, but I do have a closing statement for both, and if you'll time me. The first is from Debbie McDonald. I want to thank everyone who has helped make Celebration such a wonderful place. Over almost a quarter century, I've had the privilege of getting to know too many caring, compassionate, and committed people to count. It will be an honor to represent you again on our core board <coughs> and work toward making this an even better place to live, work, and play. I pledge to listen to everyone's concerns, demand fiscal responsibility with your money, and improve communication and board transparency. We all need to remember that this is our homeowners association and we should all have a voice. To that end, I'll be holding listening sessions in every Celebration Village over the next few weeks. Please follow me on Facebook for locations, dates, and times. I encourage you to vote for those who you truly believe will represent the best interest of the entire community. Thanks for this opportunity, Debbie McDonald. I have a uh, continuation of Kevin Kirby. With your vote and continued support, I promise to continue bringing our community to the present in projects I've encouraged, overseen, and heavily influenced, such as the updated Celebration website, uploading and organization of documents over the years, and creation of the Technology Committee, which represents one community cornerstone that has been lacking since Celebration's inception. With your vote and continued support, I will remain accessible to not only here, but actively listen to your concerns as a member of this community. Your emails at 2 a.m., phone calls as dinner is set, comments from the back porch, front porch, upper porch, back porch, social media platforms, as well as the important in-person conversations outside a restaurant or even in town are vital in keeping each of us informed and in check with the needs individually and as neighbors. With your vote and continued support, I would remain honored to continue working for a beautiful home and celebration. So, ladies and gentlemen, we finished a little bit early tonight, but I think it was worthwhile. We have many more questions that we did not get to tonight, and I encourage you to attend the next open forum with our candidates, and we'll continue. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. I'm going to quickly remind everybody that the next forum is on Monday the 17th, right here, totally different questions. And again, we have our charter review, um, the task force, basically the presentation, the town hall is going to be on Thursday, right here at um, 6 o'clock. Thank you very much for the candidates who came this evening, appreciate it. Again, thank you very much to Celia to Jerry and to Mike for helping out with the, um, the forum, and then Marianne, David, and myself. So thank you all for coming this evening. I think everybody has made themselves available if you wanted to ask uh, questions directly to them. Thank you very much. And thank you